Rather than delivering a training or videos, a course, class, or program, we believe L&D's job is to deliver learning clusters. And this is, again, that set of meaningful, organized, intentional assets. Um, these organized, intentional assets, they go in and out of the flow of work. They support when, where, and how learners need to learn. So this example, when you look at it, think of this as if you were doing any L&D initiative and you'd like to you apply the LCD model, these are some of the outputs you would see. Um, this particular example, the topic is for a innovation uh, training, an innovation capability um, initiative. So here's how the goal of a learning cluster sounds. Think about how a traditional L&D program goal sounds, okay? And that, that's what I want you to notice is the difference. By growing innovation capability in experienced talent, the business will drive scale, efficiency, and new revenue growth. On the job, we will see talent naming and leading new initiatives that explore or pilot new ideas. Justify and influence investments in areas historically perceived as risky. Curate and collaborate on innovative ideas together. So this, these are a couple of on-the-job behaviors that stakeholders might be interested in. And that's really where we get these on-the-job behaviors. And we're really trying to focus on what's important now in this initiative. We might come back to this a year from now and say, hey, you know, we've gotten better on innovation capability. Now we want to do innovation capability 2.0 and name some other behaviors. Take a look at the learn action output. At first, with and, and this is actually a real example, by the way. At first, with this innovation capability, the business just said, hey, we just want tenured folks and leaders to be the focus of this work. But after actually interviewing learners, here's what we landed with. We learned and uncovered a persona we named Siloed Shaker. Okay, Siloed Shaker was somebody who he would love to be building his innovation capability, but he's just focused on his function and his knowledge and his relationships right there in his role. And so couldn't get those sparks going for innovative, um, to, to really drive those innovative ideas he might have. Day-to-day -day Darren. Day-to-day -day Darren was a manager, uh, kind of a note that these are personas, right? So I'm describing a generic story. Day-to-day -day Darren was a manager who's really focused on day-to-day -day fires and ended up always getting stuck in the tactical pieces, as we often see managers do. And he didn't have, he or she didn't have the capacity to work on the strategic pieces that would then lead him to have those innovative sparks. And then we, ended, we had a third persona we called Big Picture Betty. This was someone who we saw as almost a champion or a um, role model for innovation capability. This was someone who had cross-company networks, really was constantly focusing on the big picture, sometimes at the expense of the day-to-day -day tactical. So these are some of our interesting personas, and it led to a particular learning cluster. So as we thought about Silo Shaker, day-to-day -day Darren, big picture Betty, we realized, wow, we really want to do some formal learning on innovation um, and leading innovation programs and building innovative capability. But then everything else we wanted to do had much more to do with social learning, had much more to do with as these folks are fighting day-to-day -day -day fires, what can they have that's immediately available to them that they could do in short stints rather than having to spend you know, a half a day or even an hour in a formal type of session. 